put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Sinister Moon Review. Ellison writes true crime novels and he moves his family into the house where someone was murdered and starts trying to unravel the mystery of what happened to the family and where did their daughter mysteriously disappear to. And as is to be expected from the genre and this type of story, strange things start happening. All of them revolving around the 8mm films he found up in the attic in a strangely placed box. And as he watches more of these films, as we do as well, things get more and more, well frankly terrifying. This movie is really, really terrifying. I can't remember when I was last this scared by a movie. Yeah, it's years ago. I, th I think this is like how it was originally watching The Thing. This is, this is actually pretty... 80s John Carpenter. Very, very creepy. This is the first horror movie I watched by Scott Derrickson. It might even be the first movie... Ah, uh, wait. Wrong on both counts. I did watch his Hellraiser movie. Well, he got better. And now I will be checking out other of his movies. The basic sort of trick to the, the film is in a very Silent Hill-esque way, it takes these very pleasant things, very, very innocent things, and perverts them. You've probably seen in the trailer that the 8mm films that he watches start out as just these nice, pleasant family situations and then suddenly something really bad happens. And I think, yeah, in the trailer, by the way, try not to watch trailers before watching this movie. They give away a bit too much because this is not really that twist-heavy of a horror film. But yeah, the one I'm going to give away is that you see a family having fun in their backyard, and there's this tire swing that is... that, that the daughter is enjoying a lot, and then suddenly the family's getting hung from this tree that had a tire swing. I think it's the same tree, at least. And it's just this great way of, yeah, just perverting this nice, innocent, quaint situation. And the whole film is kind of like that. And they do a fantastic job throughout. The sound design is great. It's one of the main sort of sources of horror. You have these really nice creaky wooden floors and just in general you hear loud thumps very suddenly and 
of course, noises need investigating. This does not steer clear of all the horror movie cliches, although I do feel that it it offers enough to make it worthwhile watching, even in spite of these. And that does bring me nicely into our flawed, but I would argue sympathetic lead. Ellison is basically obsessed with this, the idea of writing another true crime novel, and yeah, this obsession makes, it doesn't exactly, excuse me, improve things, as you would probably guess. And he does make some really questionable choices, but at the end of the day, you can understand why. You you side with him to some extent. You can kind of see, like, oh man, I might have made that stupid mistake too. It's, I would say you, you tend to forgive him. And not only because it's Ethan Hawke, and Ethan Hawke is great. And in general, just the... the the various characters and this, the family dynamic of this four-person family is just really credible and kind of, it's, it's neither too cutesy and nice nor too dysfunctional. It's, it strikes a really nice balance and yeah, you, you sympathize with all of them and actually I'd say you like pretty much all of them as well. If, if there's one you might not like, it is probably Ellison himself. But again, he is sympathetic. You might at least feel for him, if not side with him. Now, the, the, the cast is very small, and basically we have the one setting it's all taking place at the house that they moved into where someone died. The movie starts with them moving into the house. We don't see them on the road or something. Nope, just immediately. Actually, the opening of the movie, I'm not gonna give away exactly what it is, but it sets the tone. It lets you know exactly what movie you're in for right away. And yeah, it, it does not just build to a reveal of the, with, with, the, with the opening, it just smacks you right in the face and says, this, you want more because you're in the right movie then. And other than that, it is a movie of build-up. Actually, I just briefly got to finish my thought on the, the one setting, of course, creates a nice claustrophobic feeling, a feeling of isolation. But yeah, it, the movie is one of build-up. It's fairly, it has a very gradual pace. And again, not very many plot twists or the like. And as you go, it gets to be more and more intense. And the ending, oh my, the ending. You, you have got to watch, even just for the ending, watch this movie. But yes, it, it pays off to, to tolerate this more gradual pace. The scares, there are some jump scares, but it tends to be this, you know, Ellison investigating a strange noise in the house, or you see something unbelievably creepy. I'm not gonna lie, I, I, just before recording this video, I turned on all, all the lights in, in the, the little living the, the, the apartment place. I am I am seriously freaked out. I I may have to sleep with a light on or, or or something. Grab a grab a bat. Yeah. Now the 
This is expertly produced. I already mentioned the sound design. It's also really nicely filmed. It's very... There's, there's a little bit of sort of style that calls attention to itself surrounding the the playing of the 8mm, the, the, the meticulous detail of setting up an 8mm projector, which, yeah, it, it, those exist, and yeah, I, I, I'm not old enough to remember them, but it's not the first time I see one, and yeah, that, that sort of draws attention to itself a little bit, although I don't know that it really doesn't, doesn't pull you out of the movie, it doesn't distract, really. And other than that, it just, in general, is a very nicely filmed movie. Not terribly lit, though. Not, not poorly lit, but it's just not, there's not a lot of light. Actually, in one of the early scenes, they talk about how they haven't sold the old house yet. And so they're paying two mortgages. Maybe they figure they can't afford to turn on the lights. Or fix those really creaky floorboards. But yeah, it's... Some people are going to get fed up with how little light there is in, that, in this. And in general, it is a dark movie. It is a really, really disturbing movie. There, there's going to be stuff in this movie that is going to haunt you for quite some time. Now, the... This treats the theme of sort of violence attracting us and what that sort of says about us. Not as, you know, individuals, but as just as a species, I guess, just, and we very much feel like voyeurs, the way Ellison is a voyeur in sitting and watching these 8mm films, even after he learns that they contain these really, really brutal Deaths, it's, it, they're, they're basically snuff films, and I, I really am just dumbfounded by how credible they make them. Because that's really key to something like that, it, it, that, you, that the audience believes that it's real. And that is just never failing. You, you completely buy that what you're seeing is completely real. That you're witnessing people actually die. Not fiction, not staged. You're seeing people die. And it makes you uncomfortable as it makes Ellison uncomfortable. But he keeps watching and you're still in the theater seat. And that it, it makes us think... I, there's, there are way too few movies that go into that. You know... It, if, if, you know, obviously Rear Window, and for maybe slightly more obscure, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, Tesis, I think, something like that. Spanish movie, Alejandro Amenabar, if you do not already know who he is, I will hunt you down, and you will know his name is the Lord. When I rain down, I am completely botching this reference, moving on. I suppose that more or less covers it. I wanted to mention, I watched this with a friend, and he pointed out that this is a lot like Prince of Darkness in sort of the, the tone and how unpleasant it can be. And that, again, like, yeah, 80s John Carpenter and very much like Prince of Darkness. The dialogue, I gotta mention, is it's fine, basically. It, some genuinely really well-written lines. It does get a little exposition-happy at times. There are these 
there are these interviews, you'll, you'll know what I mean when you see it, and they're, they're, they're really exposition heavy. It's basically, so, how could you mention an, uh, this other plot point that we should know about? It, yeah, the humor is really, really good, and it's the kind of thing where you might not think it's, it's maybe like the most obvious thing in the world to have great humor in a horror movie, but this is a freaking intense horror movie, so you'd better have some laughs so that we can get... I heard a guy on my aisle fall off his chair. I can only assume it was from how scary it was. Yeah, that, and every scare you heard people just... Uh, yeah, and uh, and not the, the kind of overly excited of Paranormal Activity 4 either. And this, it was really, it was the real deal. I'm not the only person who's going to have trouble sleeping tonight. And by the same token, when uh, the joke played on the screen, everybody laughed. It was hilarious. Fred Thompson is in this I can't even remember when I last watched a movie with him. It's really too bad because he he can be really, really awesome. And he he has some of the funniest moments. He's he's the sheriff. And of course he's not too happy about this reporter, this this author coming in and digging up the this little small town's you know unpleasant crime story and yeah there's there's some really great stuff with that and then there's I really don't want to give too much away but there's also this other cop who gets so many laughs and he's just so great and for a little while you actually think that that cop is just gonna be yeah, he's just a comic relief but he like every other character in this is a credible character it, it suddenly he starts talking real good sense and you're like well yeah now I believe he's clearly a cop he actually is and and it's just such a relief it's just the the world that this movie creates feels so real and because of that the the effect of the scares and especially of this supernatural aspect is all the greater because it felt so real just yeah I believe that covers everything but yeah definitely if you like horror movies and you're not too squeamish Watch this movie. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.